Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky. Today we are going to be making a ton of Christmas candy. I have been in the kitchen already for a few hours today. I just finished making up all my Christmas cookies. So if you want to watch the Christmas cookie video, I will leave it down in the description box and you can watch it after we're done making the Christmas candy. It is 512. I am drinking some coffee my dad just dropped off for me and I never drink coffee this late. This is very late for me to drink coffee, but we have four recipes we're making. The reason we're making all this cookies and candies today is because I'm giving them away to friends and family and I'm going to bring them to my husband's work and a couple of the dental offices I used to work at. So we've got a lot we're going to get done today and I'm pretty excited about it. I'm pretty caffeinated and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be making four different recipes together today. We're going to be making peppermint bark, buttery peanut brittle, saltine toffee, and homemade almond roca. If you guys have never made candy, the peppermint bark and the saltine toffee candy are the best ones to start with. They are super simple, super straightforward, and you can make them and everybody will enjoy them. The almond roca and the peanut brittle they are not hard either. They just take a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. So if you've never made almond roca or peanut brittle, I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how easy it is. I have my four recipes taped up on my cupboards here because I don't want to forget any of the recipes. I also have almost all the ingredients out that I need. I did a big grocery haul and instead of putting them away and then getting them out, I just left them here. If any of the recipes sound good to you that we're going to be making today and you want to try them yourself, they will be linked down in the description box at scratchpantry.com. The first candy I want to make today is going to be the saltine toffee because that is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We'll be able to get it started, get it done pretty quickly, and we'll have a win under our belt to keep us going, keeping us motivated to get the rest of the candy done. So let's go. I'm going to be doubling this recipe. You will never go wrong doubling this recipe. This is a crowd pleaser. Everybody loves it. The first time I ever had this was in Girl Scouts. I actually was not technically a Girl Scout. The group that I was involved in when I was a kid was called Campfire Girls. We did one of those parties where everyone brought something and one of my friends brought this and I had never had it before and probably was six or seven and I thought it was so good and so simple. It's only a few ingredients. I just bought myself these huge sheet pans. If you watched my last grocery haul, you'll know that I just bought these. I am so glad I did. Let me tell you, making as many cookies as I just made, it was so much easier because I could fit twice as many cookies on each cookie sheet because they're an entire sheet. One thing I don't like about making cookies is I don't like having to do the, you know, 10 minutes in, 10 minutes out, 10 minutes in, 10 minutes out, which I still had to do that a lot, but it definitely reduced how many times I had to do it because I could fit twice as many cookies on each sheet. I just took my recipe and I just taped it right here so it's right smack dab in front of me while we're at the stove making these saltine toffees. The peanut brittle and almond roca are both going to be made on the stove as well. When you're working with candy, the time and the heat and the temperature are all really important things and you have to move very quickly sometimes. So I figured it would be good just to have my candy recipe right here so I can just be down here, look up, and I can see what temperature and what time everything needs to cook at. My oven is preheated to 400 degrees and in my heavy bottom pot, I have two cups of brown sugar and two cups of butter. I'm going to melt this together and we're going to bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we are going to boil it for three minutes. My saltine toffee is going to take a while. So while I'm waiting for this to come to a boil, I'm going to measure out. We're not going to start cooking because the last thing I'm going to do is try to cook two candies at the same time but I am gonna measure out the sugar ingredients needed for the peanut brittle in this pot right here. So, so I'm at least doing something while I'm waiting for this to come to a boil. In this pot, I'm putting two cups of sugar. One cup of corn syrup. and half a cup of water. Even though I'm tempted to keep going with this, I'm gonna stop because I need to pay attention to my saltine toffee. I'm gonna set the timer for three minutes. Moving very quickly but carefully, pour this over the saltines. I'm trying to pour it evenly so that I, it'll be easier to spread because this will cool very quickly. Now this goes in the oven for five minutes. Hey Siri, set timer for five minutes. 
While we're waiting for that to be done, let's finish measuring out the rest of the ingredients for the peanut brittle. And then as soon as that's done, we'll get started on the peanut brittle. I'm just cutting this butter into cubes so that it will melt faster. One teaspoon of vanilla and one teaspoon of baking powder. One thing to note, when you're making peanut brittle, you could make peanut brittle out of any nut you want. So you could make pecan brittle, you could make cashew brittle, whatever type of nut is your favorite, make it out of that. I'm using dry roasted salted peanuts because I like salty peanut brittle. Sweet and salt together are my favorite combination. My timer just went off for the salting toffee, so we're gonna take this right out of the oven, and it is boiling hot. Be very, very, very careful with this, and we're gonna set it aside. I probably should've used two hands when I was taking that out of the oven, because that will scald you. Boiling sugar is one of the most dangerous things to get on you because it's sticky and it's very hard to get off and you can seriously burn yourself. What we need to do now is let that cool for five minutes and then we'll top it with chocolate chips. I'm gonna take my pre-measured ingredients. I have my chopped butter, my vanilla and baking soda, and I'm gonna set this aside. When you're making candy, prep is everything because it actually sometimes takes a long time. This is probably gonna take 20, 30 minutes to get to the final temperature where we're pointed on the cookie sheet, but it all happens and comes together all at one time. So you wanna be prepared so that when it comes to that time, you're ready and you can just quickly add the ingredients and pour it out. When you want your candy to come out at a specific texture, it needs to be at a specific temperature. And you want to work in that temperature and you've kind of got to work quickly once it's at that temperature because you don't want it to get over or under that temperature. So that's why preparation is everything when it comes to candy because even if it's going to take me 30 minutes to make this, when my sugar is at the temperature I need it, I don't want to be measuring. I need to be moving quickly and I need everything ready for me. We are gonna let the residual heat from this pan melt these chocolate chips and then we're gonna spread them on top. A lot of recipes call for putting on nuts on the top. I'm choosing not to put nuts on this because I'm gonna have peanut brittle and almond roca and both of those have nuts and because I'm giving a lot of this as gifts, I kinda of want something that doesn't have nuts in it. I turn the oven off, I have the oven door open, I just plop that in there just so that it would melt just a little bit quicker from the residual heat from the oven. Because this is gonna take a while, my peanut brittle to come to boil, about 10 to 15 minutes, I'm gonna get this started. I'm turning it on a medium heat. This is done now. That only took about a minute in there. You don't have to do that oven step. It should melt on its own, but because I don't wanna be up till midnight tonight, I thought I would hurry it along. You can really put as few or as many chocolate chips as you want on here. It's definitely however you wanna make it. I'm trying to make a little bit of a design. This step right here is where you would add the chopped nuts. You could add walnuts, peanuts, cashews, whatever type of nut you like, you could sprinkle on the top, but we're gonna skip it today. And that's done. That's how easy that is. That took me probably 15 minutes, 10 minutes start to finish. So we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna let that cool completely before we break it into pieces. I'm gonna turn this down because it is boiling. I'm gonna put a candy thermometer in here because I need to start tracking the temperature. I need this sugar to get to 305 degrees. I'm taking water and a pastry brush and I'm going around the outside anywhere there's some crystal formation. I don't want that because it can affect the final product. So I'm going around the outside and I'm just dissolving those crystals and making them fall into the pot. If you leave those sugar crystals on the side of the pot, what can happen when you go to pour this out is those crystals can seed your toffee or your brittle and it can change the final texture and it can become a grainy texture. By doing this, we're ensuring the best texture possible. You can do the same technique when you're making your almond roca as well. Now that this is at a boil and everything's dissolved, we're gonna add our butter. You do not want your candy thermometer touching the bottom of the pot because that will give you a false reading. It's gonna be much hotter on the bottom of the pot. So when you put your candy thermometer in here, make sure it's hovering above the bottom of the pot. 
I kept telling myself I should have doubled this recipe, I should have doubled this recipe, but I'm super glad I didn't because you can see how much it's come up the side of the pot already. And if I had doubled it, it would have overflown. When you look at recipes online, you're gonna see two different things. If the recipe calls to put them in halfway through, that's because you're putting in raw peanuts and you're actually cooking the peanuts in the brittle. As opposed to what I like to do is buy salted roasted peanuts and put them in at the end so I don't have to manage the peanuts in here the whole time. Just know that is an option. If you wanna roast your own peanuts in the brittle process, you absolutely can do that. We have probably 15 minutes before this is going to be done, so in the meantime, I'm going to tape up my almond roca recipe, and I'm going to get all the ingredients measured out for almond roca. We're going to add two cups of butter to our Dutch oven, one cup granulated sugar, one cup brown sugar, and two tablespoons corn syrup. That one was kind of a heaping tablespoon, so this one's going to be a shy tablespoon. I used to make almond roca all the time when I was in high school. I found this book at the library. It was called a, I, I don't, I wish I could find the book now. It was a chocolate book that I would get from my local library all the time. And it had almond roca in it. And that was my go-to candy. I would make it, I don't know, probably every six months or so, which is kind of a funny thing, but any sort of candy that has a toffee or caramel with chocolate and nuts and a little bit of salt, so good. That's my favorite. It's always been my favorite. I've always loved nuts and chocolate together, nuts and toffee, nuts and caramel, it's so good. It's starting to get a little bit of color. We've got quite a ways to go though. So let's see what else we need to add in here. We need to add six tablespoons of water still and salt. I'm gonna add my Redmond's Real Salt. Good heaping pinch of salt. I just measured out six tablespoons of water into this measuring and I'm gonna pour this in here. And now we're gonna stop and I'm not gonna do anything else with this almond roca until the peanut brittle is done. This is what the peanut brittle is starting to look like. It's starting to get a little bit of color around the outside. I'm gonna give it just a bit of a stir here. While we're waiting for the peanut brittle to come to temperature, let's get the almonds chopped for the almond roca. I'm also gonna get a nine by 13 lined with parchment paper so that that will be ready for the almond roca as soon as this is done. I only have a glass nine by 13. I do not recommend putting your almond roca in a glass container because it could break. This is what I've always used growing up was a glass 9x13, but if you have a metal one or something that is not breakable, that's what I would recommend you use. But I don't have one, so we're not using it. So I thought better of it. I have this quarter tray that's metal. We're going to put it in here. We're gonna take some parchment paper. almond roca with slivered almonds or chopped almonds. I prefer chopped almonds. For some reason, I've never really liked the texture of slivered almonds. So I always chop them. I realized I did not buy roasted almonds. If I put raw almonds into my almond roca, it's not gonna taste very good. So I'm gonna take two cups of whole almonds and I'm gonna throw them in a 400 degree oven for about five or eight minutes or so. I'm gonna set a timer because I do not wanna burn these because I've already chopped almost my entire two cups and we've gotta do it again, that's okay. These almonds smell amazing. You definitely want to toast them. That's all it takes to toast nuts is just put them in an oven dry and it really increases the flavor. I want to take them off the baking sheet so they stop cooking. My peanut brittle is just at 250 degrees. I don't want to take an eye off this so I'm going to chop my almonds right here so I can keep a close eye on it. The almonds are done and they are ready for the roca. I do need to still smash the peppermint candies. I don't know why I bought candy canes to crush as opposed to the circle candies. This is a pain to take the plastic off these candy canes. Perfect. We're at about 260 right now, so we got a ways to go. 
We are getting really close. This is getting pretty dark. I'm going to drop a little bit in some water. And I'm going to see what texture it is. I'm going to go ahead and add the peanuts. I'm going to stir that in. I'm going to take it off the heat. And follow me over here. This is where you want to move really quickly. I'm going to put the vanilla in. Stir that in. And then the baking soda. That's going to make it a little bit lighter and easier to chew through. You can see it's lightening up the color a little bit there. Now you want to move quickly here. Try to get it to about a quarter of an inch thick. This is going to cool very fast on you. It's still really chewy, but as soon as this hardens, it's going to be crunchy. And the flavor is incredible. Mmm. So we have to let this cool completely, and then we can break it into pieces. Peanut brittle is not hard. It just takes time. And toward the end there, you really want to pay attention. I could tell by the color that it was getting close to being done. I took a little bit of the mixture, and I put it in some cold water, and then I tasted it. And it was crunchy so that means i know that it got to the desired texture when it was done so sometimes you do have to do that because i think if i had let it go for another 10 degrees according to my thermometer it probably would have been burnt so that's just one thing to note is you do want to pay attention to the color of it as well so i just turned this on so what i'm going to do while this is coming up to temperature i'm going to work on the peppermint bark for the peppermint bark we're going to put three cups of white chips in one bowl a glass bowl, something that you can microwave. And two teaspoons of coconut oil. We're going to pop this in the microwave for 30 seconds. We're going to stir another 30 seconds, stir another 30 seconds, stir until it's completely melted. Be careful not to burn. While that's in the microwave, I'm going to take three cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips and prep them because we're going to do the same thing with these. We have this white chocolate all melted perfectly. What I'm going to do is add two teaspoons of extract, peppermint extract. I'm gonna go put this in the freezer for about three minutes. The white chocolate is set. I just took this out of the freezer. Right here, I'm working on melting the semi-sweet chocolate. I'm doing this all while I have the almond broca boiling. We are at just under 200 degrees right now. We have 110 degrees to go. So I didn't realize until the next day that I actually made this upside down. The white chocolate is actually supposed to go on the top and the milk chocolate or semi-sweet chocolate should go underneath. That way the candy pieces stick out better, but it was a little bit late when I was making this. It doesn't affect the flavor or anything like that, but just to note if you want it to be a little bit more traditional looking and you want those candy pieces to stick out a little bit better, I would definitely recommend doing the dark chocolate and then the white chocolate and then the candy pieces. After I put the candy pieces on, I stuck this in the freezer so that it could harden completely so we could break it up into pieces. When I did the cookies earlier today, I burnt the palmier, so I went ahead and I remade them. 
I rolled them if you want to watch that it's in the other cookie video but I'm gonna cut them and bake them and hopefully I don't burn them this time the almond roca is at 250 we need the almond roca at 310 so we have a little bit to go so I figured I would have time to get these made up these are puff pastry cookies with cinnamon sugar inside of them. Hey Siri, set timer for six minutes. Vindication, I got these out of the oven without burning them. Now I won't have to do it tomorrow. I was gonna do it tomorrow morning, but I figured since I'm waiting for that almond roca, I should see if I can get these all done. I think my candy thermometers that I just bought are not calibrated correctly because when I do the brittle test where you take a piece of candy and put it in water, this is already at hard crack stage. Hard crack stage should be at 310 degrees or 305 degrees. I can't remember right now as I'm doing this. This was not all the way at that, but I did that test because it's getting really dark. So I did the test where you put it in water to see if it's hard crack already, and it is, and I thought if I let it go any longer, it was gonna burn. So I took it out, and it looks really good, it smells really good. But I don't want it to get any darker than this, because this is pretty dark. Just like we did with the saltine toffees, we're gonna to do the same thing with the chocolate chips with the almond roca. We're gonna put the chocolate chips on here and the residual heat is gonna melt them. I'm doing kind of a thick layer because this is a thick pan.
we did it. That was a lot of work. I went ahead and I cut the almond roca after the chocolate set. And now what I need to do is get these all covered. And I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna display this at my husband's work and how I'm gonna package it to send off to friends that work at a couple different dental offices around town. But for tonight, I just need to call it a night. I am super tired. It's late. It is later than I want to admit right now. And I normally don't stay up late. I'm normally an early to burp. I am normally an early to bed, early to rise type person. So for it being, I don't even want to say later than, later than it should be for me, <laughs> then I need to call it a night before I make any more decisions. But I want to let you know that I am going to show you how I package this up because I got a bunch of goodies at Dollar Tree and I think it's going to be really cute. So thank you for hanging out with me so far and I will see you in the morning. Well, good morning, friends. Welcome back. <laughs> I am moving a little bit slow this morning. I'm still finishing off that coffee my dad brought for me. I don't know about you, but if I don't finish a coffee, I throw it in the fridge and I enjoy it the next day. And I definitely am grateful for it because I'm a little bit tired. It was actually 11 when I was done in the kitchen last night, and that is really late for me. But this is the fun part. Well, I had fun last night too, but this is where we're going to package everything up. And I'm really trying to think how I'm going to do this. I am thinking that I don't, I didn't make enough for everybody that I want to give to. Honestly, I think I just made enough to bring some to my friends at their work and to my husband's work. I don't think I made enough to personally give to gifts as friends. So I will probably do another baking day, probably make something different and we'll just see how the holiday season goes when it comes to that. So I'm just going to get started, hang out with me as we get this project going today. I have it all figured out where everything's going. I packaged this up for a dental office that I worked at for almost seven years, and that's where that's going. This is going to another dental office where I have three friends that I used to work at with that dental office that I'm gonna bring these to. These candies are all going to my husband's work along with those three cookies. So what I need to do is I need to get all the cookies wrapped up in saran wrap so they'll be safe in the car traveling, and then we get to go do the fun part where we're actually gonna go surprise people and drop these off. I'm pretty excited about it. Well, friends, everything's been delivered. I was able to spend some time at each of the dental offices catching up with some old coworkers that I haven't seen in a while, and it was super awesome. If you guys don't know, this is the busiest time of year at a dental office because people want to use their insurance benefits before they run out. So that is one of the main reasons why I wanted to spread a little bit of holiday cheer because it does help when you're so busy, trust me, during this time of year to get a little sweet treat. So I hope they enjoyed it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget that part one was making all the cookies. So if you missed that video, I will link it right here and you can go ahead over there and enjoy that. The recipes will be linked down in the description box at scratchpantry.com. If you guys have never made candy, I hope this inspired you to give it a try. I want to say a huge thank you to every single one of you who took time out of your day to spend time with me. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a great holiday season, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, guys.